I'm Catherine Kalurgis, Residential Bureau Chief and Senior Reporter at The Real Deal, and I'm here at the Gale Hotel and Residences with developer Russell Galbit. I'm Russell Galbit, a principal with uh, Global Family Offices, or GFO Investments, and I'm here at the Gale Hotel to talk a little bit about the Gale Hotel and Residences. I wanted to ask you first about demand for this type of project where you know there's condos and there uh, there's flexibility in how unit owners can rent them out. What have you seen in terms of demand and can you talk about whether the project is sold out or if you have units left? Over here uh, at 601 we have a property that consists of multiple uses. One of those is called Nativo which is a shared community that is completely sold out. Uh, in addition to that, we have the Gale Hotel and Residences, which has a few residences left, but not many. And it is a shared community, a shared condominium community that's professionally run. Do you have units left for sale? We have a few units okay. left in the residences, I believe. What is the general price point for these types of projects? They usually are somewhere in the neighborhood of 600 or 500 and above. Okay. And they can range as high as a few million dollars. Okay. You recently launched another development, 14 Rock, and that one will be professionally managed? The difference there is that one will be run by the association themselves. And some people do want the flexibility of being part of the management of the operation, while most will want a professional manager in place. So that is the differential between the shared condominium community of 14 Rock and uh, Gale Hotel and Residences or the Nativo brand. How does that affect the unit owner? Is it is it in their dues, like how they pay the HOA, or what, what's the difference there? So the difference there is that uh, when it's something is professionally managed, it's managed professionally and they're the responsible party for keeping the front desk, uh, which is a requirement of the City of Miami. And the requirement is getting more onerous as time goes on because they themselves want it to be organized appropriately and properly and they don't want to have complaints from the public. Uh, but some people still want to be part of that management company. So when it's the association that manages the sharing, the transient sharing of the individual units, then they're in charge of it and uh, and many people do like that. But the vast majority of purchasers today want things professionally done professionally run. The reason they want them professionally run is because they're looking at this as an opportunity to own a piece of real estate in a community that they want to be part of, okay. where maybe they come three months a year. All they're looking to do is to have the ability to rent it out a few weekends so that their maintenance is covered or some of their expenses are covered. Okay. No one's doing this as a business or no one that I know of is doing it as a business. They're doing it because of the convenience of having your own property, having your own facility, and they just want the ability to own this by themselves and having some of the expenses of the operation being reimbursed to them. Okay. There are obviously like a lot of eyes on Miami development. It's continuing. There's still, you know, you just launched a project. Um, a lot of the new launches are for short-term rental friendly developments. Can you talk about how, you know, what the, what, why banks are comfortable with that and, and what's driving some of that construction? I, I think banks are comfortable with it because the quality of the people who are buying. It's so, it's so fascinating to me. Everybody wants a piece of Miami. We have the weather, we have the Port of Miami, we have the Arts and Entertainment District. I mean, it's just, it's fascinating to me how Miami has gone through this uh, change. It was the uh, arena, the PAM Museum of Art, the Frost Museum of Science, the ballet, uh, the Arts Center. All of these that formed the basis of the Arts and Entertainment District brought about the original change. Now we have something else that's fundamentally changing our community, and that is our new train station. It's just incredible what we have here in South Florida, and everybody wants to have a piece of it. Even if, though they have to, for financial reasons or business reasons, they have to live in New York City or they have to live in some other city in the Northeast, they want the opportunity to own a piece of heaven. Okay. And that's what we have here, we have heaven. And how are you targeting those buyers? You know, targeting the buyers today is really easy. Um, because everybody wants to be here. So all we have to do is uh, put on the internet our website, show them the images, show them the pricing, and it's really a very easy sale. We covered a report where it stated that more than half of the condo pipeline, uh, so projects planned, completed, or under construction, are short-term rental friendly developments. Are you worried at all about an oversupply of that product type? I'm not really worried about an oversupply of that product type. I, I, I think that that's fine. Uh, I don't think that 
people are going to stop wanting to have a slice of South Florida, especially Miami, Miami Beach. Everybody wants to, to have a presence here in South Florida. I know obviously it's summertime, but are you planning to launch any more of these types of projects in South Florida? We actually do have quite a few projects in South Florida. Uh, I do believe that more of them are true homes in the sky than uh, shared communities. Okay. So, we, you know, that is the basis of what we have done historically, whether it be Crescent Heights or GFO. Historically, we build great homes in the sky that people want to live in and make it their home. And the reason for that is it creates affordability. Not everybody can afford a $10 million mansion on the ocean, right. but they can afford a two or three or $4 million condominium as long as it's large enough and significant enough for their family and their family needs. What is your portfolio and how is it divided? Uh, I would say that our portfolio is provided, divided about 90, no, maybe 80% for first time, for, for re true home buyers, okay. and maybe 20% for the shared community. Okay, so the majority of your projects are traditional condo or, Trad okay. Traditional condo. But that may change over time because what we're hearing from everybody is they want the flexibility mm -hmm. to be able to rent it for certain weekends, so not to make money, not to do it as a business, but to pay some of the expenses of the of holding okay. it as a home ownership. Where do you kind of see us, like in terms of the market cycle, do you think that this demand will kind of continue to go and go and go, or do you, are you predicting like a slowdown? I, first of all, I don't think we're building enough housing. I don't think we realize that on a global basis that we are building enough housing in America. Okay, children, uh, the next generation, are, are, you know, don't necessarily want to live with their parents. They're forced to live with their parents because they don't have any choice. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, our family is six generations. Born in, I'm born and raised on Miami Beach, mm -hmm. and I'm already older. So there's three generations after me. And what I find disheartening is that so many of them were forced to go to Hollywood, to Broward, to Palm Beach, predominantly because there's no affordability on Miami Beach. Affordability is an issue that we will have to deal with in the future. We want our children to be successful, we want them to be happy, and we want them to live in communities that we were raised in. What are some of the challenges when developing a project like this with short-term rentals? Like, How do you kind of maintain that quality of life with the transient nature of, of a project like that? I'm very happy that you asked that question. You have to do it through rules, and those rules have to be codified, and you have to have a strong front desk management. So you're doing that from the beginning in the condo docs? In the condo docs, okay. okay? And thank God, we're, this property is professionally managed. Now, there are those people who don't want that, who want to be able to do whatever they want to do on the management side, and they would be buying in 14 Rock. Okay. To continue following the story, tune in to therealdeal.com.